right now on Chasing Purpose. I am sitting next to. Let me do a proper introduction. Let me do. It. Let me properly read because I'm gonna get him. You know, I'm gonna get all excited because we spent a girls' trip a week last week away, getting our money right, and getting our mindset right. But today's we're going to explore the world of personal finance and the emotional and psychological aspects of our relationship with money. What does our relationship with money currently look like, and how can we heal from it if we? have an issue or trauma from it. Our special guest today is Kalila Reynolds, an award-winning business and finance journalist, educator, and entrepreneur with over 20 years of experience in television and radio in Jamaica and Belize. Kalila has a wealth of knowledge and experience to share with our listeners. Make sure you have your journals, your glass of water or wine, whatever floats your boat, because I'm sure Kalila is going to share gems. She's also the creator and executive producer of Jamaica's most influential business talk show taking stock let me just let that sink in guys you hear me did you let me let me say it again she's also the creator and executive producer of jamaica's most influential business talk show taking stock with nearly three million that's what i said three million views on youtube Khalil is also a published author of two books and holds an MA in communication studies and a BA in journalism, both with distinction. And may I add, because I was witness to, she is now an international speaker and all these things. Kalila Reynolds, welcome to Chasing hey, Purpose. Hey, thank you so much, Sin, my new sister. I mean, let, let me tell you Ooh. guys something. We're going to talk about um, what we where we just came from, which is Puerto Rico. Rachel Rogers, hello, seven, seven ROI Millionaire Summit. Mm-hmm. It's a mouthful to say. Um, Naomi Garrick, if you guys remember, last year was on the show and she talked to, uh, she talked, I think it was on air off. I don't remember about this. We should all be millionaires book. And she said, Sin, you have to have one. Not even a week later, she called me and said, I have your copy and she gifted <laughs> it to me. And that was where the seed was planted. Mm-hmm. And my understanding is that you are really the, you're the plug. Yeah, I told Naomi about yeah, the book. Which is which is what we should be doing as we're all about to be millionaires is sharing this information. So, Kalila, I'm going to first ask you, before we get into the questions, um, let's talk about last week. Mm-hmm. What what happened last week? And why I'm sharing this with you, guys, Bridge Nation, is because we are of the mindset that we need to be all millionaires. We need to be creating yes. millionaires. Yes. Right? A sisterhood and a brotherhood around what that mindset is. Not not just the act. Yes, we want the physical money, right? But there's also a mindset that comes mm-hmm. with that. And I think that a lot of things were unearthed for us um, all of us. So, and and let me just tell you guys something. The Jamaican delegation, which we've now been pegged, okay, we turned up. Jamaica showed up and showed out, okay. And you can go on our pages to see the pictures. The and flag and was the, everywhere. The flag, the, fla- the flag was flagging, guys. The flag <laughs> was flagging, and it really was. It was our pride that was showing. Mm-hmm. And and let me just tell you guys. Um, so we're talking about a room for uh, about a thousand plus, maybe um persons. And this lady that sits beside me gets on stage, right, to tell to open up this ceremony. So it's oh, a me. week long. So ce- yes, you, you man, that was <laughs> the lady me. that sits. Me. I'm like, who was beside you at ROI? <laughs> <laughs> she 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 jumped. She got on the stage. The opportunity to share her sermon. And we were so proud. I mean, we did the J- Jamaican thing. We get up on Galang Bad. All we didn't have, all thing we needed was our pot covers. <laughs> we're talking about in in this auditorium in Puerto Rico of a thousand persons. Kalila Reynolds got up and shared her story. Um, and and I would love. I'm putting you on the spot, Kalila. But if you can just share just a little bit of it with our listeners. Oh wow. Okay. So here is how the story started, yes. and you'll remember the opening line very well. Yes. Right. I took my laptop to the hospital when I was giving birth to my son. 
like if that a dedication and that just sounds <laughs> insane yeah. right but i promise you i'm not some crazy workaholic although i do work a lot and i enjoy working i enjoy Important. giving back mm -hmm. but there was meaning and reason behind it and why i felt that i i was compelled to do that if you guys remember a couple of years ago trans jamaican highway ipo mm -hmm. was out that was mm -hmm. a hot thing no whole of jamaica all of a sudden was interested in stocks and not investing. just jamaica I was, I was in the i was in new york at the time and we all were trying to get stocks exactly Exactly. And so now I had been doing this work for a year, year and a half mm -hmm. before just educating people about what investing is, what stocks are. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden people are ready to listen. Mm -hmm. They're ready for this message. Now all of a sudden everybody's asking me, what are stocks? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. what's an IPO? What's all this about? Should I put my money in this investment? Mm -hmm. All the problem is I am nine months pregnant yeah. <laughs> when all of this is happening and I'm due any day now. And my show was brand new. I just launched Taking Stock like three months before. Mm -hmm. We booked an interview with the finance minister, Dr. Nigel Clark. Only problem is I'm nine months pregnant. So I remember looking at my belly and I'm like, son, <laughs> just give me a couple more days. <laughs> Let me do this interview and then you can make your grand entrance to the world. So I did the interview Friday with Nigel mm. Clark. My son was born on Sunday and the show came out on Monday okay. on schedule because I had schedule. to pack, the, pack up that laptop and <laughs> get that work done because at the time I didn't have a whole team like what I have now. It was mm -hmm. mostly just me. Mm -hmm. Well, that shows your dedication and your passion and purpose. Um, on your, your, your purpose journey? Because I do you believe this is what your purpose to do? Yeah. Educating absolutely. persons around finance. And, you know, I was talking just earlier in, in the last hour about um, finance and, and people some just generally don't know mm -hmm. um, about finance. Yeah, you hear about having a bank account, a savings account, um, an IPO. When, when I first heard about an IPO maybe five years ago, I'm like, what is that? Mm -hmm. What does that even stand same, for? Same. You know, like, so it's it's so important, this work that you're doing, um, educating all of us on what is possible for us. Right. And I think right now, with all that's happening with the SSL scandal yeah. and Usain Bolt, I think financial education is even more important Absolutely. than ever. Absolutely. When this first Absolutely. happened, I was like, oh, no, now nobody's going to want to hear about stocks mm -hmm. and investing. Mm -hmm. And nobody's going to, everybody's going to be scared. Mm -hmm. People who are considering to start investing yeah. might change their mind. And yeah. this, this has happened to some degree. Mm -hmm. But I think it even more so is an opportunity to, to double down on the mm -hmm. message and help people understand what's going on why it's going on how can you protect yourself what are the the different avenues available to you and I'm, I'm happy that you touched on that because coming from New York um, we're also this show's also aired on Irie Jam radio in the New York tri-state area a lot of our I've heard a lot of our listeners and persons and the people that I know personally are now wanting to come and pull you know, mm -hmm. their money. What would you say to them? You know, how would you reassure them? No, that's not the right thing to do. Yes, this happened. However, um, your money is safe or, you know. Well, I cannot be the one to deliver that message because right. I do not run these financial institutions. <laughs> let's, let's, let's I can't make, tell you that your that money clear. is safe. <laughs> But what you should do mm -hmm. is get in touch with your financial institution, mm -hmm. make sure that you're on their mailing list and you're getting the information, ask a lot of questions, yeah. look through their financial statements to see their position. Are they in a position where if something like this happens, mm -hmm. then you are assured that you get your money back? And mm -hmm. I saw uh, several institutions issuing statements and one in particular stood out, which was Sagicor. Sagicor mm -hmm. sent out a statement saying, if anybody ever teeth your money, mm -hmm. we will give you back. Mm -hmm. We'll pay it back mm -hmm. 100%, mm -hmm. which is what typically happens at most institutions because mm -hmm. there is theft. We've heard of other instances as well. Mm -hmm. It doesn't get, not on the level of what was stolen yes, from well, Usain yes, Bolt, yes, 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 but yes. what typically happens is that the institution just pays back the money because they have the money to pay it back. They're well capitalized. Mm -hmm. In this case with SSL, it seems that they That's don't the have case. the money mm -hmm. to pay it back. And part of the problem is that SSL is a private company and we in the public are not privy to their financial statements. Mm -hmm. We can't just... so. Eight of the eight of the thirteen licensed brokers in Jamaica are publicly listed. They're on the stock exchange, which means that they are obligated and required to publish their financial statements every three months. 
to the public. Mm-hmm. You can just go online right now NC. and see exactly how much money NCB make, how much money they have, how much money they owe. But for SSL, we don't have that information. Okay. So one of the changes that has come out of this, and I heard the finance minister say it last week at a press conference, mm-hmm. is that all of these institutions are now going to be required to make that information public. Which is, yes, so research your institution. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be hasty and say, I'm just pulling my money out at mm-hmm. Jamaica or out at the institution, but research and find out how strong, how solid is the institution that you have your money before you make any decisions. Great, great advice. Um, tell us about your journey into journalism, journalism and then finance. Mm-hmm. So, well, for that, we have to go way, way back. Yes. <laughs> When I was five years old, <laughs> <laughs> probably by the time I was about five, mm-hmm. I decided that I want to be a writer. Okay. And that was my big career ambition because I loved write, I loved reading and I loved writing, mm-hmm. telling stories. And I published my first book at the age of seven. Yeah, well, hello! <laughs> well, publishing. You know, here's what I mean by publishing. I wrote a book on paper like this, staple it together, draw some pictures. <laughs> and you published your and book. And I... Did I sell copies of that? It was my intention to sell copies of that. But at seven years old? (laughs) At seven years old. But I'm from Belize, as you mentioned in Mm -hmm. the intro. Mm -hmm. And similar to Jamaica, we're a developing country. And I was always told that you can never m- make a career out of being a writer mm-hmm. in Belize, that you'll never succeed. You're not, you're not going to make any money doing that. Mm-hmm. I had this grand ambition to be this great Caribbean writer like V.S. Nepal and win yeah, a Nobel yeah, Prize. Yeah. And that dream just never seemed attainable to mm-hmm. me. So growing up, I started thinking, OK, what can I do that will allow me to write all day, mm-hmm. which is what I love doing? Mm-hmm. And I also had a, a deep interest in Uh, current affairs in social issues my dad is a trade union leader and so we grew up singing union songs we (laughs) shall not we shall not be moved we so they were like picketing with their stuff we grew up singing union (laughs) songs i was deeply interested in social affairs Mm -hmm. and social justice Mm -hmm. and i said well i can marry these two interests Mm -hmm. and why don't i write real stories Mm -hmm about things that are happening to people in real life. Yeah. And who does that? Journalists do that. Yeah. So I can follow you know, everything that's happening, politics and society, write about those things. Mm-hmm. And my idea was that I was gonna be a newspaper and magazine writer. Okay. Didn't work out that way. Okay. My first job happened to be in radio. Okay. I was like, why radio? I hate my voice. <laughs> kind of kind of cute so i could do tv <laughs> kind of cute <laughs> i could do tv and i'm a great writer i could do print but of all the media available radio i have this uh, I, I i appreciate my voice now my voice has matured you have a lovely voice. it doesn't sound like what it sounded like 20 I, years I'm ago i'm sure that was just in your head <laughs> that was just in your head so i ended up doing radio and then that that led to television because mm-hmm. radio TV they yes, often hand in hand, yeah. very synergistic. Mm-hmm. That led to television. I've never worked a day in print, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I did get to write a lot. I did get a lot of experience covering politics, social issues, several major hurricanes, several elections. Moved to Jamaica, did the same thing here, mm-hmm. and then. Along that journey, I started developing an interest in business and finance. Mm -hmm. I realized I love reporting on the stories about the economy. Mm -hmm. I love hearing how businesses are doing and what's, you know, and especially since around that time in Jamaica, the stock market was really booming Mm -hmm. and I became really interested. And then I started investing for myself because I had this period where I was just reporting on these stories and I was seeing how much money other people were making. And I was like, hold on. If they can do it, you can why am I just telling these stories yeah. and not doing what they're doing? So I started investing. And once I became an investor now, I had an even deeper interest and I wanted more information. Mm-hmm. Couldn't find the information I was looking mm-hmm. for. Yes, Glena Observer reports on it, mm-hmm. but I wasn't really, it wasn't connecting with me. I mm-hmm. couldn't really understand all the language and the jargon. Mm-hmm. I'd, like you, I didn't know what an IP, well, I did because I was a journalist, mm-hmm. um, but um, there was a level of understanding that I didn't have. Mm-hmm. So I started doing research. And then I started putting that out on my social media. Mm -hmm. And then other people were like, oh, let me follow her because she knows the stuff that I want to know. And I started sharing it and it just grew from there. Grew from there. So I'm talking about a three million viewed, over three million views on YouTube, Mm -hmm. right? Which is a huge accomplishment. And you've authored two books. So from that, 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 our seven year old self, Right. You've Mm -hmm. now you've accomplished. You actually accomplished that dream of writing books. So I want to talk about your mindset about money before 
getting um to know or deep the diving deeper into um find the business of finance and all that stuff what what were you taught about money or what was your relationship with money like so my financial education consisted of my parents saying that what you should do in life is you go to school Mm -hmm. you study hard you get a good job Mm -hmm. you work hard you save your money you buy a house and that equals financial success. That's it, yes. And Similar. <laughs> <laughs> didn't quite work out that way. Yeah. And I did all the, first, the initial steps. I went to school. I studied hard. See, distinction. Yes, yes. Got distinction, good grades, everything. Got a job. Worked hard. Worked very hard. Uh, but I was not able to save the money to buy mm-hmm. a house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it just, the, these things that they told me would lead to success mm-hmm. and the measure of success being buy a house mm-hmm. just did not add up to what they were supposed to add up mm-hmm. in my financial education, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And that was a sore spot for me. Yeah. I was like, I felt like a failure. And even though I was, you know, so smart Mm -hmm. and doing so well professionally in my career, I was a financial failure. Not just because of the host thing, but I also had credit card debt. And, you know, daughters in prep school, there came a time when I couldn't pay her school fees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I remember early in my career in Jamaica, too. I was, you know, on TV at night and then riding the bus yeah. with everybody else. JUTC, big, big presenter, my full makeup TV face and on, on the, bus. the bus. But there's so many people that are right now in this situation where they have no idea what to do with it. The, the, edu- the education is not there because they don't teach it in school. They do not. And then, you know, our parents are just, they're just to trying to, it. you have to seek the information. Mm-hmm. And that's why what you're doing is such important work because now you're able to educate us and tell us what we should know and what we should be doing um, as it pertains to our our finance. How do you think our relationship with money affects our self-worth? Ooh. Ooh. It affects it a lot. So Mm -hmm. what I told you about not being able to to achieve that goal of buying a house, Mm -hmm. I felt less than. Mm -hmm. I felt like because I have all this debt and because I, you know, can't pay the school fee and because I'm taking the bus that Mm -hmm. I am not worthy of all the great things right. that life potentially has in store for me. Right. Which was so further, so far from the truth. Mm-hmm. So far from the truth. Um, and, and Because you blame yourself. You say, you it. made the mistakes. Right. It's your fault. Right. It's my fault that I'm not where I'm supposed to be because I went to the party yeah. and I spent the money on the shoes. So and you guilt yourself. And I and made poor decisions. Mm-hmm. And so you blame mm-hmm. yourself for mm-hmm. the reason that you're not financially successful. Mm-hmm. But you have the power within you to turn that around. And that, that's where that, in, that imposter syndrome, mm-hmm. that imposter syndrome comes in and, and begins to speak louder than what your, 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 your positive self-talk is supposed to be doing. Um, how do you think fear of having too much can impact um, our financial well-being? I'm reading this book by Gay Hendricks called The Big Leap, and he's talking about CEOs and certain persons in bu- in business having li- limiting upper beliefs because mm-hmm. they just feel that they shouldn't be making mm-hmm. money. They're, 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 there's this idea of if they make too much, you know, it's, I, I don't even know what, um, what Dominique is saying is abundance anxiety. I understand it. I, I, I And don't. I relate to it. Mm-hmm. So there was a session at ROI mm-hmm. named, uh, is making a million dollars ethical. Yeah. Yes. Did you attend oh, yes, that session? Well, yes, I did. Yes, I only, yes, yes. I only caught snippets of it. Mm-hmm. But I remember posting the, the screenshot from mm-hmm. the stage mm-hmm. and somebody was asking, people are really asking this question. I'm like, yeah. yes, yeah. this is a big question. Mm-hmm. And it comes from some of the things that we are taught in the Bible, in mm-hmm. church, mm-hmm. of money is the root of all evil Mm -hmm. which apparently is a misinterpretation of that phrase Mm -hmm. um the rich man can never enter heaven Mm -hmm. and that type of thing i grew up catholic Mm -hmm. belize has a very strong catholic base and in catholicism in the catholic faith the priests take a vow of poverty and so yeah i didn't know that yeah they take a vow so they you always see them in the robes and they just look poor (laughs) they take a vow of poverty poverty and chastity Mm. and so it was always in my mind considered wrong to aspire ah, for a lot okay, of money. Okay, okay. So it sounds like a, there's a lot of work that needs to be, like relearning then, mm-hmm. um, that needs to be done as it pertains to our finances. But when we come back, we're going to jump to a quick commercial break. When we come back, more with Kalila Reynolds.
Welcome back to Chasing Purpose, heard right here on the Irie Jam Radio in the New York Tri-State area. I am speaking to Miss Kalila Reynolds, journal, finance journalist, educator, and entrepreneur, and so and much. And international speaker. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm Whoop. sorry. Say it louder for the person. And international for the speaker. persons in the back. She is an international speaker, y'all. Um, did an amazing job at the ROI Millionaire Summit. Clearly, can you talk about the importance of cultivating a positive mindset towards finances? Yeah, so mindset is something that is extremely important, and I didn't even fully realize it mm. until last week mm. when I went to ROI. Mm. I had a major mm probably two or three major breakthroughs yeah. surrounding the mindset. I didn't even realize I had these limiting beliefs mm. around money, mm. some, of the, some of which probably emanated from what I just told you about yeah. growing up Catholic Correct. and you know the thought about money. Correct. I didn't realize these things. Mm. And the moment I made that breakthrough, the stop ball, <laughs> like you guys saw me. It I was, was just beautiful, crying. Though. No, but it was it was it was beautiful to see that uh, awakening. Then mm -hmm. that stepping into stuff, that like, identifying that okay, there there is this, but no, I can go above that. That that glass ceiling mm -hmm. breaking, mm -hmm. you know. And I saw it in real time, guys. And this is why this this summit is so important. And just kind of shifting our minds around what we were taught growing up around money, or not, or not taught. You know, a lot of us were not really taught, sat down and taught um, this is what you should be doing or that you can achieve this. You can go into stocks. There is this thing where you can have. I don't know. If, do they have IRAs here? Rotha, that's just a that's no, a, no, that, no. Okay, that's a, that's overseas. But you can um, do investing. You can. That's a type of like you, retirement savings, yeah, right? Yes, yes, yes. So yes. we have different different options, different. not that specific one. Yes, but but that but those things are attainable. It's not just going to getting a job or going to school, getting the degree, going to work, and getting making sure you get a good job so you can get a house mm -hmm. but there, it's so much more we can own so much more and it starts with with our mindset do you remember and what myron said i posted a so clip from much. myron he, he said he had gems upon gems so, upon gems so much. but the clip i posted from myron said that if you want to be wealthy you have got to disconnect mm. your revenue generation from time disconnect yes I remember that disconnect your revenue generation from time because disconnect your revenue generation from time. Ex can you exp expand on that? So you only have so many hours in a day. Yes. You and you're limited. If your revenue generation is limited to the amount of hours that you can work mm -hmm. for money, mm -hmm. you'll never be wealthy. No matter how much money you're making, because you always see basketball players, uh, athletes, super uh, entertainers, musicians, mm -hmm. they're working for money. Mm -hmm. They may be making a whole lot of money, but the minute they stop working, the minute they stop exchanging their time for money, That's that revenue ceases to come in. Yeah. But you have got to disconnect your revenue generation from time. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you need to be making money without having to exchange your time yeah. for it. So doing things like investing, having mo having your money work for you, yes. investing in property, investing in stocks, mm -hmm. things that are going to generate your money, mm -hmm. money for you without you having to physically work for it. And I want to talk about some of the limiting beliefs, right, that are out there around money. Mm -hmm. What are some things, you know, as you said, growing up you saw, you only saw poor, is that the right, would that be the right word? Um, priests. Yeah. You didn't see priests. It's a vast that, poverty, so yes. poor is the right so word. Poor, you saw poor priests. They weren't living lavishly like you see some of these that social media priests. That was a culture priests. shock to me when I saw priests having driving Benz, yeah. pasta, pasta have private jet, yeah. pasta in Louis Vuitton. That was a culture <laughs> shock to me. It, it, but there, but these are these are the limiting beliefs because it's how you grow. But what are, what are other limiting beliefs around finances? Right. So there's so many mm -hmm. that we have in our minds. So we grow up believing that uh, the exchange of money for time is just how the system works, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we don't even realize that there is another level mm -hmm. to it that we can have products. So we grow up also believing that we need to work for we somebody. Work. Yes. 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 And we are trained, we are conditioned from an early age to be employees. Mm -hmm. And, and there's not much conditioning mm -hmm. to, to believe that we can be entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. that we can lead our own businesses. Entrepreneurs mm -hmm. solve problems. Yeah. If you yes. are a natural problem yes. solver, mm -hmm. then it is easy for you to come up with an idea, mm -hmm. 
that other people will also be interested in, which is a sense of what I did. Yeah. I came up with an idea that other people also want and are willing to pay yeah. for. And that you're very interested in. Exactly. And that's another thing too. There's and it's a about lot serving. Us, and it's, it's about not only serving about and service. making yes. money. It's yes. not all, and that's the thing that we have. Entrepreneurs, oh, they're greedy, oh, they're mm -hmm. rich, they mm -hmm. just want money. Mm -mm, mm -mm. The most successful entrepreneurs are really about serving are others. Are of service, correct. They are of and service. And you serve others first, mm -hmm. and in the process of serving others, money comes to you. Absolutely. The, uh, oh my God, there's just so many w different <laughs> ways that I'm going because I'm thinking of all that Myron, that Myron said, mm -hmm. right? There, Listen, you, I ordered his two books, oh yeah. <laughs> and I signed up for his course, Did you? which is next week. <laughs> I went home and I started binging. I found every podcast that he's he been is on. Myron Golden. At, he's I think that he's Golden. at Myron Golden yeah. on social media. Yeah. But we, we do need a re-education around what our mindset is when it comes on to to money and how we can make money as you said we are conditioned to be the employers but we can be in, um, entrepreneurs right um, we there's a lot of us that are passionate about so many different things and do not don't realize that we can turn that passion into money mm -hmm. we can turn that passion if it is that you have love to talk about finance see Khalilah's turn her podcast into a, a money generating one mm -hmm. right where she can talk about finance she's giving also giving back right and she's she's doing what i believe she's purposed to do and passionate about you know whoever created this water bottle right that person had the foresight to say look this See water bottle says? can be a, what does it say it says let's get this let's, money and let's get because that's what we're, that, that's what we're <laughs> about let's getting that let's get that money for uh, what is the name of the business Kalila Reynolds, Kalila media. Reynolds media um and she's be building a media house off of this because I think I saw on your social media that you now have a whole production yeah a I have a production. studio I have a team I have yeah. all things that you growing up you probably didn't even think you could attain because of the never conditioning. Never even occurred to me. Never even occurred to you, right? All I Just, thought was I need to go to school, work hard, get it. a job. So let's talk Let's talk about that. What, what are we telling our children today? How are we educating? Because you have young children, mm -hmm. um, as do I. What, what are we telling our children about money? How, what seeds are we planting? What are we saying from now at this age? What are we gonna, how do we plant the seeds to say, this is, what, this is the steps that you should take so that when you're older, this is how you can be successful or this is what you can do when you get of age? Yeah, I'd absolutely love to nurture the entrepreneurial mm -hmm. spirit in my children. Mm -hmm. My children are two, four, and 20. Uh, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the 20 year old growing up she has had all kind of ideas so she is an artist she's mm. very artistic okay. she draws uh, paints does stuff like this okay. she's, she's really good she's now studying architecture and people who have been in art traditionally are told the same thing that I was told mm. you never make no money as an I artist yeah. if you are starving a limiting the belief. term starving artist yeah. yep. a but, limiting belief yeah. but Alexa is also quite entrepreneurial naturally. Mm. And I remember her making things as a kid and selling them. Yeah. And she set up A's Jesus. Art Business. <laughs> <laughs> she had her little company named A's Art Business. Okay. And she was selling, and she was not afraid to go out and find clients. She would come to my work in the evening and she would sell to my coworkers. Yes. Yep. And then Sounds she familiar. would even upsell and get them to buy stuff, like pre order yeah, stuff. I love so that. she's like, okay, if you give me this money now, I'm going to make this idea. For it. So she doesn't even have the item yet, and she's already sure. selling it. Which is something we learned um, in uh, over in Puerto Rico. Yes. That's something that Rachel has taught in her um in her club. And that's, this that's child amazing. just that's, in, that's great. innately that's knew great. to do that. That's good. She, so she has the entrepreneurial spirit, right? So you're mm -hmm. nurturing that. Yeah, yeah. I've encouraged it. So mm -hmm. she didn't take me up. I wanted her to register her business when she was 17. I'm like, wouldn't that be so cool if you register, if you were a registered business owner at Companies Office of Jamaica before you even turn 18? Wow, yeah. And I encouraged it, but she never did it. She yeah. never did it. Uh, hopefully she still will yeah. at some point. Yeah. So what uh, what other tips can we share with our <coughs> listeners about the education of finance um, at this age so that we can plant the seeds? Right. So it's important to just at least teach your children how money works. Mm -hmm. So money just doesn't, you know, parents always say money doesn't grow from Poor trees. trees. Yeah. <laughs> well, explain to them how does, how yeah. is money generated? Mm -hmm. I remember my, my other daughter, Narisi, who is four, she's mm -hmm. going to turn five soon. Mm -hmm. She had this idea that you just go to the ATM and get money. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I had to explain to her that, no, you have to put money in the bank first yeah. in order to get money out. And she was like, oh, but where do you get the money to put in the bank? Because right. she was like, oh, but you can just go to the bank yeah. or just use your credit card. Yes. You yes. know, yes. not yes. understanding yeah. that when you use your credit card, that's actually a loan that you have to pay back, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know. So just oh. the edu just having the real conversation. Just explaining to them how it works, where money comes from. Mm -hmm. and Important. It, it all depends on the age of the child and what they're mature enough to understand. But as they grow up, mm -hmm. just start understand, just start explaining to them how it works. Mm -hmm. About um, creating me ma and maintaining personal wealth. What mm -hmm. tips do you have for our listeners? So we have three keys to wealth creation. You mm -hmm. ready? I'm writing. <laughs> Rich Nation, Ari Jam fam, make sure you have your pens and your journals. We're writing these things down. I probably should say four now, mm -hmm. but three major keys to wealth creation. Mm -hmm. uh, you have real estate investing. Big time, yeah. But that requires a lot of money up front, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. You have to have a lot of money or at least access to a lot of money because mm -hmm. you're probably going to borrow the money to buy the property. Yeah. But not everybody can get approved for the loan, mm -hmm. right? So there's real estate investing, which over time has shown to be, you know, you get good returns off of real estate. Mm -hmm. Number two, you have entrepreneurship, probably the most profitable of the three keys, but entrepreneurship is still exchanging your time for money and yes. we spoke about that right yes. entrepreneurship is going to take a whole lot of your time it is, it is. And, and sometimes it can take years i was just going to profitable. say it is not as easy and before it, it, while it is not as easy I, I from for me an entrepreneur it is the 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 best bet because again you get to do what you love Mm -hmm. um, and you get that, that idea of giving back and being of service. So I love the idea of being an entrepreneur. I love the idea of being a real estate investor also. We're yeah. going to talk about that. For me, that. it's the most rewarding, being yeah. an entrepreneur. And yes. It's where I spend my most time now. Yes. And no, number three, though, is stock market investing. Mm. And the thing about stock market investing that I love is that it doesn't take a lot of time and it doesn't take a lot of money. So you can earn passive income from stock market investing and you can start with very little money. People always feel like you need a whole heap of money to start and they're going to say, oh, I'm going to start when I save up $100,000. No, you can open your investment account with as little as $500 at some financial institutions. 500 Jamaican, Jamaican dollars. 500 Jamaican dollars? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> All right. I was just going to say, how, and then how just much? bill from there. Okay, okay. And then just keep investing. So every month when you get paid, you put something in the investment account, you purchase new uh, assets. Okay. So, and the key, what all three of these things have in common, let me see if you can guess the, the commonality between the three. We talk about real estate, mm -hmm. entrepreneurship, stock market investing. What do they have in common, Sin? Real estate, stock market investing, and what was the Entrepreneurship. Last one? I mean, they all need money. Mm hmm. What else? Ownership. Oh, yes. That part. That's the real key. Yeah. Your ownership. Owning. You got to own assets that are going to increase in value over time. So you own property. So that increases in value over time. The you own the your business. Yeah, going to increase grow. in value mm -hmm. over time. And the stocks are going to increase in value over the long term. Stock market investing is not for buy today, flip tomorrow. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. can do that. Some people do that and they make a, a good profit, uh, a good living off it. Mm -hmm. But that's still trading your money for time because you're going to spend a lot of time doing the research. Finding and those forget, trades, yeah. right, right? Right, right, right. So right. when you think about it over the long term, you really want to buy assets own assets, own assets that will increase in value over time that's the real key so that's the to key. wealth creation yeah i am now about to get my entire financial literacy together by yeah. following taking stock but and taking the, the class and, t and taking yeah. and, we, and we have a class which is important yes there's a class Tell us there about is the class. a class it's called the money mission master class yes because we're on a mission to educate yes. jamaicans about money yes yes, and yes you can just go to my website mm -hmm. at kalila reynolds.com slash master class and we teach basic the basics about budgeting mm -hmm. we go into uh, managing debt mm -hmm. so especially if you have high credit card yeah. debt how do you get out of that and then we talk about a lot about investing and how to start investing important give the website again it's Kalila Reynolds dot com. Kalila Reynolds Google my name; com. it will pop right up. And spell, spell the, spell the spelling, then the the correct so spelling for us. K A L I L A H R E Y N O L D S dot com slash masterclass. If you go to the homepage, it will You'll take you see. there too. We'll see. And we're talking about let's get this money. That is the slogan this for money. this money, right? Um, so Kalila. Let me ask you this, or let me, yeah, let me ask you this. 
to our listeners, just leave with them a few tips on how they can become better financially aware. Mm-hmm. So Google, Google, make Google Everybody's your best friend. best friend. Everybody's best friend. <laughs> make Google your best. I don't have any degree in yeah. finance mm-hmm. or um, economics mm-hmm. or you know none of this stuff. Mm-hmm. I didn't study this stuff in school, but the difference is that I actively sought information. Mm-hmm. Anything that I didn't know. You, yeah. Google, mm-hmm. Google. Mm-hmm. And so many people ask me questions. They DM me, what is this? What is that? How does this work? How does that work? Mm-hmm. And I go to Google yeah. and find the an answer. Mm-hmm. What well, they could have done the same thing. Yeah. Just you know, go on the internet, look mm-hmm. on, go on YouTube, spend some time trying to understand. There's so many free resources out there. Yes. But if you want me to tell you, you can take my master class. <laughs> 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 Put everything in one place. Uh, that makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. But yeah, anything that you need to know, just do a simple online search. Invest in your own personal education. Buy books. I'm that constantly part, reading that part. Invest in your own pi- your 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 awareness around finance. Mm-hmm. Invest in it. It is so important. In anything, whether it's finance or whatever it is that you want to do, invest in it. Invest in yourself. Bet on yourself because right. I can believe. I can. Tr- I can promise you. Once you bet on yourself, there's gonna be return on that investment. All right, we have to wrap. Mm -hmm. Um, Thank you, Khalila, so much for joining me. I enjoyed the conversation. We're going to take this conversation off air. But please, please, guys, bet on yourself. Invest in yourself. As always, sow seeds that we all can benefit from. Wishing you love, light, and, of course, purpose.